The History of the Peloped Line Atreus and Thyestes Hippodamia was exiled by Pelops for the murder of Chrysippus, and the innocence of Atreus and Thyestes in this matter was also called into question, causing both to flee from the kingdom of their father. Their exile took them to Mycenae, where Hippodamia committed suicide. There it is said that they took refuge at the palace of King Eurystheus, who was the king of Tiryns, though some say he was king of Argos. In some versions of the story, King Eurystheus, who was responsible for the labours of Heracles, was Atreus's cousin. Eurystheus made Atreus regent while he himself headed off to fight the sons of Heracles, known as the Heraclids. When Eurystheus was killed in battle, the Mycenaeans chose Atreus as their leader because of his prowess and good regard amongst the people. In another version of the story, Eurystheus' father, Stenelaus, retook control of the throne. He then summoned Atreus and Thyestes and placed them in power in the Argolid stronghold of Medea, which had in previous times been known as Perseuspolis. After both Eurystheus and Stenelaus died, a prophecy was revealed to the people of Mycenae via an oracle that they should choose a prince of the Pelopid line to be their ruler. At this point the brothers Atreus and Thyestes were summoned by the Mycenaean people from Medea so that they could choose which of them would become their leader. Atreus had once vowed to sacrifice the finest of his livestock to the goddess Artemis. Knowing this, the god Hermes saw an opportunity to take divine retribution for the death of his son Myrtilus at the hands of Pelops. Hermes convinced Artemis to test Atreus's fidelity to her, and so she sent a golden lamb to be amongst his flocks. Atreus, now with the opportunity to fulfil his oath when this golden lamb appeared to him, failed to carry out his vow, instead killing the lamb and placing its fleece in a chest for safekeeping. This is very similar to the story of King Minos and the sacred calf. Unamused by this, Artemis then cursed the fleece and took her revenge on Atreus. Atreus's first wife was called Cleola, and Artemis caused her to produce a sickly child called Pleisthenes before dying in childbirth. This child was later murdered accidentally by Atreus's men. The second wife of Atreus was Erope, also known as Europe, the daughter of King Catreus of Crete. Erope would have three children with Atreus namely Agamemnon, Menelaus and Anaxibia. Erope, however, fell in love with Atreus's brother, Thyestes. Because of her love for Thyestes, she stole the chest containing the golden fleece and gave it to him. The Mycenaean people, in accordance with an oracular prophecy that a Pelopid should become their next king, had summoned the brothers to Elis. Atreus claimed the kingship because of the right of primogeniture. Thyestes, however, suggested to the crowd that whosoever was in possession of a golden lamb should become king. This was a common attribute of kingship in the ancient world. Atreus agreed to this, believing he was still in possession of the golden lamb's fleece. However, Thyestes and Eropae's treachery was revealed to Atreus when his brother led the crowd to his home and there produced the golden fleece. Thyestes was then declared the rightful king. Zeus favoured Atreus over Thyestes and sent Hermes to visit Atreus, telling him that he should persuade his brother to come to a new agreement regarding the kingship. Atreus was to convince his brother to agree to let him become king if the sun reversed its course in the sky. Thyestes agreed to this. Thereupon Zeus, aided by Eris, reversed the laws of nature which hitherto had been immutable. Helios, already in mid-career, rested his chariot about and turned his horses' heads towards the dawn. The seven Pleiades and all the other stars retraced their courses in sympathy, and that evening, for the first and last time, the sun set in the east. After some time, and knowing of his wife's adultery with his brother, Atreus sent a herald to summon Thyestes with the pretense of friendship and reconciliation. It was time for Atreus's revenge upon his brother. Upon arrival at the king's home, 
and still under the pretense of hospitality and the protection of Zeus as suppliants. Atreus then murdered Aglius, Canileon, and Orchomenus, the children of Thyestes, by a nymph. He chopped up their bodies, boiled them, and served them to Thyestes in a meal. Atreus had kept the extremities of the bodies and watched as his brother consumed the meal, belching heartily to show polite satisfaction. Atreus then produced the extremities of hands and feet and heads and played with them, tormenting his brother with the horror of what he had done. Atreus banished Thyestes and sent him into exile. Forced from the land by Atreus, Thyestes desired revenge by any means and sought a prophecy from the oracle at Delphi. The response he received was that he would gain his revenge if he fathered a son by intercourse with his own daughter. Because of this prophecy, Thyestes went to the kingdom of King Thesprotus in Sicyon, where his daughter Pelopea served as a priestess of Athena. Thyestes sought out Pelopea and found her one night as she was performing sacred rites to the goddess. During the rites, Pelopea slipped in the blood of a black ewe being sacrificed to the goddess and found her clothing stained. Pelopea went to the temple where there was a sacred fish pond and stripped in order to wash her clothes. Thyestes, wearing a mask, then raped his daughter, who had one foot in the pool and one foot without. Because of the mask that he wore, Pelopea was unable to see that it was her father. She did manage to steal her rapist's sword, which she then secreted underneath the pedestal of a statue to Athena inside the temple. Realising that his sword had been stolen and could be used to identify him as the man who had raped Pelopea, Thyestes fled from Sicyon back to Lydia. Adrius too was afraid of his own actions in this affair. He again consulted the oracle at Delphi and was told to retrieve his brother from Sicyon. He arrived in the kingdom of Thesprotus too late, however, with Thyestes having already fled. Atreus became enamoured with Pelopea, whom he believed to be a daughter of Thesprotus. Seeking a political alliance, Thesprotus did not correct Atreus's assumptions and arranged for Pelopea to become Atreus's third wife. Thyestes' rape of his daughter Pelopea produced a son whom she gave birth to in secret and then left abandoned upon a mountaintop to die of exposure. The child was found by shepherds who gave him to a she-goat to suckle. The shepherds named the child Aegisthus, which meant goat strength. Atreus would later seek out the child, believing that it was his own and that his wife had acted in an irrational manner caused by childbirth. Aegisthus was hence raised as one of Atreus's own sons. Later, Thyestes is brought back to Mycenae by Agamemnon and Menelaus. Atreus then had Thyestes imprisoned and ordered a very young Aegisthus to execute him in his sleep. Aegisthus attempted to slay Thyestes with his own sword, but his father awoke and disarmed him. Recognising his own sword, Thyestes then asked Aegisthus how he had come into possession of this weapon. The boy replied that his mother had given it to him. Thyestes spared Aegisthus' life on the condition that the boy performed three tasks for him. The first of these was to fetch his mother and bring her to the cell. Aegisthus brought his mother Pelopea to see Thyestes, and she wept at seeing her father again. Thyestes asked Pelopea how she acquired the sword, to which she answered that she took it from the man who raped her in the temple. Thyestes told her that the sword was his, and in her horror, Pelopea took the weapon and plunged it into her breast. Thyestes then handed the bloodied weapon to Aegisthus and gave him his second task to perform, namely to return to Atreus and tell him that his execution had been accomplished. Aegisthus was to then return to receive his third and final task from Thyestes. Upon doing so, Thyestes revealed to Aegisthus that he was his father. He then gave his son his third task, which was to slay Atreus. This dark deed was done by Aegisthus, fulfilling the oracle's promise to Thyestes that a child of his by his own daughter would slay his brother. 
Aegisthus then restored his father to the throne of Mycenae. Agamemnon and Menelaus With Thyestes on the throne and their father and stepmother dead, Atreus's two sons, Agamemnon and Menelaus, fled to the court of Polyphides, king of Sicyon. Polyphides then sent the brothers to stay with Oeneus the Aetolian, before they were ultimately brought back to their father's kingdom by Tyndarius, the king of Sparta. With Tyndarius's help, they exiled Thyestes and extracted an oath from him that he would go into exile and remain in Cythera. Aegisthus, fearing the revenge of the Atreidae, fled to the palace of King Caelorabes. Agamemnon then killed King Tantalus of Pisa, a son of Broteus, along with his children by his wife Clytomenestra. Clytomenestra was the daughter of Tyndarius, the king of Sparta, and sister to Helen, Castor, and Pollux, also known as the Dioscuri. The children of Tyndarius were born to his wife Leda, and their real father was Zeus. Agamemnon then married Clytomenestra, causing her brothers Castor and Pollux to intercede. Agamemnon, however, had already gone in supplication to Tyndarius, who had been in all things to him and his brother a benefactor. Tyndarius gave Agamemnon his forgiveness, and allowed him to keep Clytomenestra as his wife. Helen of Sparta was kidnapped by Pirithous and Theseus. Following her successful rescue, and the Atreidae settlement with the Dioscuri, she became the wife of Menelaus. Following Helen's abduction by Theseus, the Argive kings came to an agreement. To prevent Helen being kidnapped again, all the Achaean kings took an oath that they would unite to defend the man chosen as her husband. Agamemnon was now the king of Mycenae, whilst his brother Menelaus became king of Sparta, having succeeded Tyndarius, whose own male children, Castor and Pollux, were now dead. Wealth flowed into their houses and many satellite kingdoms paid tribute to Agamemnon. Agamemnon had four children by Clytomenestra, a son named Orestes, and three daughters called Iphigenia, Electra, and Chrysothemis. Some say that Iphigenia was actually Clytomenestra's niece, being the daughter of her sister Helen and her kidnapper Theseus. Hi everyone, I'm Doc Sloan and I'd like to thank you for watching my science fiction station. We'd love to hear your comments and feedback on our videos. If you enjoy the content, please give it a like, and if you're a bit of a fan of science fiction, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and spread the word. Thanks very much, bye bye.